On today's episode, we'll be talking about extraterrestrials, time loops, Sasquatch, and much more. All coming up on this edition of Midweek Mysteries. Welcome to the show, and thank you all for joining me. I am your host, Nick Ryan. Before we start, I'd like to say thank you to Catherine and Eric for their support and generosity. If you enjoy the show, please remember to subscribe, share, and review the podcast. This supports us by helping new listeners to discover the show. And if you'd like to support us even further by becoming a patron or by donating, please visit us at patreon.com slash paranormalmysteries or at buymeacoffee.com slash paranormal. These links and others can be found in the show notes. And if you've encountered the paranormal and would like to share your story, please email me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com. All experiences, no matter how big or small, are always welcome. And with that in mind, our first midweek mystery comes to us from Dario. And Dario's story is called... Triangle UFO. Dario says, Hey Nick, I really enjoy this platform you've created for people to share their stories. Today I wanted to share an experience I had with my family back in Christmas of 2009. I live near the border of Mexico, so it was normal for my family to go visit my father's sister for the holidays. I don't remember much from that night, but I do remember all of us going outside to see three red lights above us in a triangle shape. You couldn't see any clouds or stars where this object was. The object seemed so huge due to how close it was to the ground. My father estimated that it was about a mile off the ground. There was no noise. It was like it absorbed all the noise around it. I would say this lasted no more than ten minutes, and the object slowly moved north out of sight. Now, the weirdest part of this story is that after it left, a hot air balloon about the size of a small car came down and then proceeded to follow the object. To this day, I have never seen a hot air balloon that looked like that. My cousin may have footage from this, and if I get it from him, I'll be sure to share it. And one final thing before this gets too long. I was on the UFO subreddit, and I found a thread talking about the same lights that I had seen that night. It really makes me wonder what we all saw that night, and if I'll ever get another chance to see something like it again in my lifetime. At the time, I was nine years old, and now that I'm 20, I have never seen anything like it. Thanks for taking the time to read this, and keep up the amazing work that you do. Our next listener story comes to us from Kenneth. Kenneth says, Hello. I have a really unique story, along with a peculiar photo to share. I've been traveling across the country the last few days on a military PCS from Wyoming to my new base in Florida. Along the way, I have become a huge fan of your podcast and want to share an extraterrestrial experience of mine, along with a Sasquatch-related photo. My experience occurred back when I was around nine years old in early 2001, when I was living in a small farming community in California. My younger brother and I had never had any significant paranormal contact before this experience. We were living with my father and stepmother prior to their marriage in our old house. They were planning on purchasing a larger house for our blended family later that year. My brother and I, unbeknownst to us until later, shared the same exact dream on multiple occasions. Our dream took place in what would be our shared room in the new house, and we couldn't have had any clue what it looked like because it was a new development being built. In the dream, we're both being levitated above our beds with our blankets draped across us and hanging down towards the bed. A bright white light shining through the shutters illuminating the entire room, and at the foot of both of our beds, standing between them, is an alien figure. The figure is short, about four to five feet tall, and has a slender body with a long, cone-shaped head and the blackest eyes that seem to have stars inside them. The alien is lifting its left arm up above its head and making a very steady, deep humming sound. About a minute of relative time passes before the alien vanishes, the light vanishes, 
and we fall to our beds, at which point we are jolted awake. Fast forward about a year, we are living in the new house, and myself and my three brothers are all in the backyard, sitting in our new hot tub, because we thought we were so cool. I brought up the dream and how it took place in what is now our shared bedroom, and my brother expressed confusion at first, then almost excitement, as he shared that he had had the exact same dream. About five minutes later, I'm looking up into the sky, and I see a light traveling from north to south, slightly larger and more prominent than the appearing stars. The light was slowly pulsing, in and out, from light to dim. I watched it for a few seconds, and then out of nowhere it paused at its brightest point, and then maneuvered in a fashion that made me positive it was moving upward, away from the earth. I have no idea if the dreams are related to the sighting, but to this day I really feel that they are. Let me know what you think. Sorry that was so long. Here is a photo of what I think might be a Sasquatch or Bigfoot print. This was taken on the Air Force Base in Wyoming. No other prints could be made out, so it could be coincidence. I will say it was windy, and the blowing powder could have very likely covered the other prints, meaning this one would have been made deeper in the snow originally. I also wear a size 12 boot, and was wearing steel-toed boots at the time. And this thing makes my boot look small. For anyone that's interested, I have added Kenneth's photo to our forum, so you can see it firsthand. Our next listener story comes to us from Anonymous, and their story is called Time Loop or Doppelganger. Anonymous says, Hi Nick, I recently found your podcast and I'm enjoying it very much. I have a few stories and I will write back again with others, as I'd like to spread them out to offer you more content. This story that I will share tonight comes in the point of view of my best friend, who I will refer to as Red. I have heard her repeat this story so many times over the years, and the details have never changed. Red worked as a bartender in a nightclub in downtown Denver, Colorado. It was a typical Saturday night, and Red got to the club early to set up her area of the bar. There are no customers in the club at this point, just a few employees including herself. The club she worked at is actually three levels, connected by one main staircase in the center of the building. The employee restroom was at the very top level, and so she went to climb the stairs, and her co-worker, I'll call him Jay, came around the corner from the upper level and walked right past her on the stairs. They said their hellos and continued on. Red gets to the next level of stairs, and around the corner, coming down the stairs, is Jay again. He said hello and kept on walking, just like he had literally seconds prior. She was so stunned and confused, but with the club about to open and get busy, she had no choice but to set it aside for the time being. The night wore on, but Red couldn't shake the extremely uneasy feeling she had, so when the club was finally closing for the night, she hurried to tell Jay what she saw. To Red's shock, Jay tells her a story about something similar that happened to him weeks prior. He was in the lower level of the club with another worker of theirs named Brandon. Jay told Red that Brandon was being sort of weird because he wasn't talking much at all and was just unusually quiet. Brandon is always joking and laughing, so this behavior stood out to Jay. But he also didn't think too much of it at the time. They were cleaning up for the night, and Jay says he'll be right back because he needed to use the restroom. So he climbed the three floors to the top floor bathroom, and right as he's about to enter in the door, out walks Brandon. Jay starts freaking out and tells Brandon what had just happened, and they both run down to the main floor bar, but it was empty. My friend has a lot of stories similar to this, either from her experiences or someone she knows. A lot of bars and clubs in the area of Denver are in very old buildings with a lot of history, and some of that history being a little bit on the darker side. I hope you keep releasing episodes. It's been a very welcome distraction during this pandemic. Thank you. Our next story of the night comes from Lee, and Lee's story is called Comforting Hand. Lee says, Hi there again listening to the latest episode about another listener's late grandparent saying a last goodbye got me thinking about mine. My grandpa passed away in 2011. Due to being an electrician for most of his life, he ended up passing away of asbestos poisoning. Not a good way to go. 
Leading up to his passing, he became less and less the man that I knew. He was a strong and deeply thoughtful man, and he never hurt anything or anyone. At the time, I was only just joining the workforce, and he was going downhill. And it got to the horrible stage of mom and dad telling me that it was my last chance to say goodbye. Regretfully, I couldn't bring myself to see my grandpa in that way. It wasn't him any longer. Some time passed after he had left us, and I recall sitting by myself on the ground, just thinking about how much I regretted not going to see him. I closed my eyes and began to let a few tears go when I felt a hand on my left shoulder. I didn't open my eyes, but I put my hand on my left shoulder, and there was no hand. But I knew it was Grandpa, reassuring me that he was fine, and always with me. Thanks for letting us all share our experiences. Lee Our next story of the night comes from Nikki, and Nikki's story is called Last Visit with Poppy. Nikki says, Hello. I have been listening to your podcast now for a year or better. I had been entertaining the idea of writing in with my own experience, but hadn't found the time. Recently, you've had a few similar stories of loved ones visiting to say goodbye after their deaths, and I took that as a message from the universe to finally write mine down. In the early morning hours of March 3rd, 2016, my grandfather died. I truly believe my spirit was brought to the afterlife for one last visit. This experience was incredible, and it forever changed my belief system. It was comforting because I now know without a doubt there is something after death. Here is that story. First, a few things you should know. My grandfather, whom I called Poppy, was in a nursing home, but he was in good health at this point. In fact, the staff was starting to discuss his discharge plan because he was well enough to go home. He had been admitted to the nursing home to convalesce after a health scare a few weeks prior, but he had recovered with no lasting effects and could completely care for himself. So his death was very sudden and unexpected. Second, his wife, my grandmother, was also in that nursing home, but in the memory care facility because of her Alzheimer's and dementia. Her condition had worsened to the point that she could barely speak because she simply could not remember most words. And lastly, I am a very light sleeper, and when woken up, I am immediately awake and aware. Around 4 a.m. on March 3rd, my then six-month-old puppy had gotten up for the usual trip outside to do his business. Afterwards, we went back inside to bed like normal. I fell back asleep easily and started to dream. I say dream because I don't know what else to call it, but I don't think that is what this experience was. I remember that floaty, swimming feeling of falling asleep, then blackness. Then, I faded into this bright, well-lit place. It was like I had been placed there, and my consciousness had to catch up. I blinked a few times, and the blackness fell away to find that I was sitting at a table. I looked slowly around to realize that I was sitting at my grandparents' dining room table. In both life and this place, the dining room table was at the back of a large room that served as a dining and living room combined. The kitchen was through the doorway to the right, and I could hear someone, presumably Poppy, making food. This was admittedly a familiar scene. He loved to cook, especially for his loved ones, and I had often visited to share a meal with them prior to my grandmother's health troubles. Everything was the same as I remembered it, except that it was better, nicer, perfected. I remember thinking that it was like how they would have wanted it if they could have had the money and energy to make it that way. There were no longer any chips in the paint, or cracks in the glass of the old photos, and so on. Everything was brightly lit, like sunlight was gently radiating from within, but it wasn't too bright. It didn't hurt my eyes, and at this point, I started to think that this was more than just a dream. The television was playing a baseball game on the opposite wall to where I sat, and behind it, the curtains were open to the front yard, sidewalk, and street beyond. The street was busier than usual, and many more people were walking by than normally would have been in our small town. Everything outside of the house appeared to be from the 1950s era. Cars, clothing, etc. At this point, I see my great aunt walk by, which caused me to doubt the situation. You see, to my knowledge, she was alive and well. My grandmother was sitting in the rocking chair next to the table. We were having a conversation that I can no longer remember, 
but I did take note that she was getting frustrated and confused because she couldn't seem to remember certain words, which I provided for her. It was then that I realized that those were the words that she still knew in life, and I fully understood that Poppy is the one who had died, and I knew that I was not dreaming. These are fully conscious thoughts I am having. I start to stand up to go to him, but an alarming buzzing sound startles me. I look to my right, directly at the wall behind me in the kitchen, where this sound seems to be coming from, only to fall into blackness again. The buzzing sound continues to my right, and I struggle to open my eyes. It takes me a few more buzzes to realize I'm back in my own bed, and my cell phone is ringing on the nightstand, to the right of my head. I fumble for it, and have to concentrate very hard to swipe correctly to answer the call from my mother. It is now 8.26 a.m., and I know what she is going to say. I manage to groggily answer. I put the phone on the pillow and lay my head on it because staying upright was too difficult just then. She says, Nikki, I have some bad news. Poppy died this morning. I know, I reply. What? How? I haven't even called your sister yet, comes her startled response. I am struggling to wake up from what I assume now was the abrupt and sudden transition from whatever that experience was in my current reality. I very much just wanted to close my eyes and fall asleep, but I struggle to sit up and I say, Ugh, give me a minute. You woke me up from this other place. I take a few deep breaths and force my eyes open. I started by saying that Poppy was okay where he was, and the parts of Grandma that were no longer with us were there with him. Then I recount the whole thing to my mother. After I finish, I start asking questions about how and when it happened. When the third shift nursing staff did their first round, Poppy had complained of just not feeling well. So, as a precaution, they transferred him to the emergency room to be evaluated by a doctor about midnight. I believe this was the standard practice, because the nursing home was in the same building as the hospital. If a patient needed care beyond what the nursing staff could provide, they used the emergency room as a resource instead of maintaining a doctor on call. Anyway... He spent about three hours in the ER, where they did not find any cause for alarm. He was stable, given fluids, and monitored. Around 3 a.m., he was transferred back to the nursing home's care. He told his nurse that he felt much better, and was going to get some sleep. By the time the next shift came on for their first round, at 5 or 6 a.m., he was gone. All the details work out, from the timing of events to the words my grandmother couldn't remember, and the placement of the buzzing phone. I believe that I experienced a peek into the afterlife, and I am so grateful for it. Oh, and remember how I said that my great-aunt was out on the street? That fits, too. We found out a few days later that she had had a serious heart attack that same morning, and she ended up in the ICU, but she survived. I'd love to know your thoughts about this experience. I listen to many podcasts while I work overnights in a bakery, and I love to hear first-hand accounts of paranormal experiences the most. Thanks for reading, and keep up the great show. I truly enjoy it. Nikki Our last listener story comes to us from Rifter, and Rifter's story is called A Ghost Sabotaged My Camera. Rifter says, Mr. Ryan, first of all, I love the show. I have been binge listening for about a week now at work. I'm almost completely caught up, but I thought you'd be interested in this. I have attached some photos to this email. I have been a photographer for a few decades, and about nine years ago, I was photographing a wedding shower at an Athenaeum in Middle Tennessee. After the session, I asked if I could walk around and take some photos of the rest of the property. They said yes, and these photos are the result. I apologize for the poor resolution, but I had to download these photos from Facebook. I lost the originals in a hard drive crash a while ago. I've circled some spots on some of the photos where it looks like lens flares, but lens flare doesn't act like that. Also, my brand new camera's shutter button broke while I was snapping these photos. I don't know if the story is worth telling, but it's interesting, nonetheless. Thank you for your time. Rifter I've also uploaded Rifter's photos to our forum, so for anyone that's interested, you can check them out there. As tonight's edition of Midweek Mysteries comes to an end, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for tuning in, and a special thank you goes out to Dario, Kenneth, Anonymous, Lee, Nikki, and Rifter for sharing their experiences. 
If you'd like to share your thoughts or a similar experience with one of tonight's storytellers, please email me and I'll be sure to forward your message onto them. If you've witnessed something that you can't explain, please contact me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com or visit us at paranormalmysteriespodcast.com and click on the Tell Your Story link. All of our contact information can be found in the show notes. And until next time, I hope that you all have a safe and healthy rest of the week, and we'll see you back here on Friday with our next episode. From all of us at Paranormal Mysteries, thank you for listening, and please remember, don't wait for the unknown to come to you. Get out there and find it.